Welcome back. Well, uh, it's not a bad market. I mean, it's absolutely flat if you look at the headline index, but the mid caps are doing very well. So up about 190 odd points on the mid cap index. Many stocks are sitting at fresh highs today. We were just talking about a few of them. Inox Wind is at a fresh high now. It's up 25% this year already. The big theme has been renewable energy in the last couple of weeks and months. And Inox Wind is uh, one of them that has, you know, sort of reduced its losses. And now uh, the stock is doing extremely well. But Glenmark Pharma is the next management in focus. The company has reported a weak set of Q3 numbers. The revenue slipped nearly 28%. But the company in its conference call indicated that they will be net cash positive this year and will see recovery in the India business in Q4. V.S. Money, who is the executive director and global CFO of Glenmark Pharma, joins us now uh, to talk about that. Uh, Mr. Money, thanks a lot for joining us. You know, um, you, it, I understand that this is a transition quarter for the company. So there has been a bit of, you know, a degrowth as far as the uh, top line is concerned. But can you guide us more on, A, what's happening with the India business? The, the distribution model has changed this quarter. So that has impacted the business. And what are you expecting going forward? When do you see growth return? Good morning. Um, thanks for inviting me to your channel. So uh, basically, the company implemented changes in its distribution model, uh, and we actually consolidated our stock points. Okay, and this led to uh, you know basically uh, channel correction. You know the inventories in the channel, and uh, this is basically a one-time correction. Okay, if it were not for this uh, correction, our growth would have been almost nine percent for the quarter. And as you can see, even IQVR reported that for October to December, Glenmark grew at about 11.9%. So the growth and the secondary market has been pretty healthy, okay. So the advantage of doing this uh, correction is has been that basically it will help us to improve our working capital, at the same time improve our margins. Uh, also, the in future, the secondary sales and the reported numbers will be close to each other. And uh, all in all, I, we felt that this was uh, key to do. And uh, that's why the company did this. But barring this, the underlying growth has been pretty good. But uh, I just want to understand on the operational front, right? This time there was a big EBITDA loss of about 200 odd crores. Um, by when do you think you can get into the black on the operational front? It, will it happen in this financial year itself? Yeah, it will happen in the next quarter itself. I mean, barring this, uh, if we were to have actually not done this correction, we would still have been in the, uh, you know, we would have been in the black. So this is the first time in a long time we are there but uh, barring that uh, we would have been in the we would have been positive okay so that's how we look at it okay. uh, mr money hi good morning uh, for uh, so beyond this the quarter that we are in uh, for f525 uh, sir what uh, what what should we expect sir in terms of growth uh, both in the india business uh, and in the us business as well i mean the last time we we, we spoke you put out some guidance for the us business so if you could just sort of talk to us about F525. So uh, obviously, uh, I'll try to guide you on the sales side. The, mm. the rest will probably wait for the Q4 to get over in terms of EBITDA, mm. etc. Just to guide you, the India business, uh, normally in a good quarter, we have what about uh, anywhere close to 1,100 crores as turnover. So I think going forward, that is the trajectory we'll see it at. And we, I mean, even if you take our secondary sales or historically, we've always grown at close to 10 to 12%. So that growth will always be there. And uh, coming to the overall company growth for the next year, I think uh, we are again looking at about a growth of almost 10 to 12 percent on an overall basis because some of our geographies like Europe, uh, emerging markets, they've all done very well. Now, coming back to the US, uh, as you can see, uh, emerging markets have grown at almost uh, 18 to 20 percent in the first nine months. Europe has grown at an astounding rate of close to 50 percent. So these have been very good growths. And, and as I explained to you earlier, if, if it were not for this one-time impact, India would also have seen a very good growth. U.S., obviously, the last couple of quarters, we have not had any significant launches, okay? So because of that, as well as obviously, the well, the price erosion has come off, because of these two factors, the uh, turn, I mean, the, I mean, the uh, turnover is at about 92 million or so. Uh, we, and this quarter, of course, we have, we have launched a couple of injectables, which we are hopeful that they will give meaningful sales in the coming quarters. So we are hoping to touch close to 100 million uh, going forward in the U.S. So for a, on and, a full uh, as far as the margins are yeah. concerned, obviously in the coming year we see improvements because of uh, one. Obviously, as we had explained during our call as well, on the innovation side, we are, because of all the changes that we have made and the alliance that we have, we are expecting a sort of reduction in our expenses by about 25 to 30 million dollars. 
as well as uh, Rialtor is doing well and also, uh, you know, it's my expansion in uh, geographies of Europe and Latin. So, I think so, that's how we see the coming year. So, so a top line growth of uh, 10 to 12 yeah, percent, margins between 18 20 percent? Margins, so? uh, I mean, as I told you, it will grow better than where we are in terms of that. But uh, to put a number, we'll probably wait for the Q4 to get. Okay. All right. Hi, Mr. Mani. Good morning and good to have you on the show, sir. You know, your operational performance, you've given us a fair idea. You know, $100 million uh, in the U.S. business on a quarterly basis. I think India goes back to 1100 crores. But over the weekend, you know, a couple of my colleagues were working on the story that it's, it's a possibility that Novartis could be on the block. Uh, you know, how does, uh, uh, you know, would you all look at it first of all? And do you think there are any kind of synergies that could play out between you all? If it's on the block, I would like to know. What are your thoughts? No, we are uh, not really looking at, uh, at uh, any significant M&A right away. We have been okay. actually, uh, you know, sort of, we have been, uh, in a way, you know, in licensing products okay. that you saw, uh, some of those okay. that we saw, the Enofoli map, and there was a product, okay. for, you know, WinLevy. So these are products we in license, but uh, we haven't looked at uh, m and in such a... Ha big... Have you heard about the asset being on the block though, sir? No, sir, we are not really so much keen. If it's on the block, are you all interested? No, I wouldn't know. Oh. You, uh, you would not be, in, because, you know, there would be some kind of overlap. There would be, a, uh, it could bring something to the table. So, if it's on the block, you all would still not be interested? No, sir, we are not really Got looking it. at, we are looking more at what, uh, you know, critical product additions, platforms that would help us to grow our business. As such, Got if it. you look at it, Glenmark has been doing well. We have got good growth across all the geographies. We are doing well, I mean, barring some things in the US where we are also working on correcting where we are. I think broadly the business is doing well. So I don't see a reason why we should immediately Okay, can you ahead. give us... Sure. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. Can you give us an update on the US FDA, uh, you know, regulatory issues? Uh, when can we expect some remediation to be completed? If you can tell us when is a re-inspection happening across all of your uh, plants, right? Whether it's Goa, Baddi, the Monroe facility. Can you give us a status check on that? So as such, as far as the remediation is concerned, I think broadly we are done with everything. I mean, mm. nothing significant that we expect in the coming quarters. Even this quarter, it was not so much. Uh, we are hopeful that an inspection will happen in Q4 or Q1 and we'll see some, you know, uptick in the Monroe facility. Mm. Uh, uh, by when? On the Monroe facility? By Q4, Q1 of... by the coming, that is, uh, this coming, I mean, this quarter, obviously, there's just one and a half months left. Or in Q1 mm. of uh, FI25, one of the two. Okay. And uh, in terms of Rialtris, the respiratory drug, I just want to understand what is the way forward? What are you expecting in terms of um, uh, from this drug as well as from other new launches in this space itself? So, Rialtris has been doing pretty well. Madam. We have launched it across many geographies. Uh, as you can see, currently it's almost like a $45 million product. We're looking at almost like a $75 to $80 million in the coming year. Now it's obviously it's it's we have we've been selling through partners as well as through geographies where we have field force. I think it's doing quite well in Europe and beginning to pick up well in the US as well. So we are hopeful, okay, that and our also our partner in China will support the thing. So I think overall we are looking at a good coming year for our And as right, far as yeah. the other product launches in the respiratory side are concerned, they are actually obviously you can see some of them are done well in Europe and going forward other law other I mean other I mean uh, Whatever we are launches we are looking at, I think they will do pretty well. Mm. Okay, Mr. Mani, we we'll leave it there, sir. Thank you very much, and uh, it's always good speaking with you after the quarter numbers. And uh, we look forward to future interactions as well. Thanks very much uh, uh, for joining us.